Okay, my guest at this time is a the booker for BCW, and he is also the UIWA slash BCW Pacific Northwest Heavyweight Champion. I am joined with Lone Star. He is joining me right now. Hello, Lone Star. Welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing, man? I'm doing real good, and thank you for being on the show this evening. Well, thank you for having me. All right, let's go ahead and begin. And um, what made you decide to be a professional wrestler? Well, um, the job I was working at, uh, one of my friends was uh, was on uh, uh, a wrestling uh, crew in Portland. Uh, started out training with Billy Jack Haynes and uh, ran into me. Asked me if I was interested in joining it. And, uh, you know, they said, yeah, yeah, come on down. So I did. And uh, that was about 13 years ago, and that's what I've been doing, man. And, you know, that's a, that's a, long, that's a long time there, 13 years. I mean, I, I don't know how what the average is for wrestlers, how long their wrestling careers last. But for anyone to make it past 10 years, Given you know how much de- physically demanding it could be, uh, that's that means a lot. I mean that says that you, people been fortunate and not have any severe injuries. Would would you think that? Oh, absolutely. Um, well, me when I broke into it, I broke into it at the age of thirty two. So, you know, <laughs> it's uh, unusual to start out at that age, you know, to get into it, and. Uh, I, I myself haven't had any, ex, you know, really extreme injuries. Um, I've been I've been very fortunate. I don't do a lot of crazy things though, so that kind of helps. You know, that's interesting. Um, you know, you start at the age of 32, which means you would have had to train with wrestlers that's in their early to mid 20s. I mean, how was the whole training process like? Having to train with wrestlers that was, you know, 10, 15 year, uh, years younger than you? Um, well, it was, it was, and like you said, it is extremely demanding. And when you're training with guys that are, you know, uh, like you said, 10, 15 years less than you, they, um, they make you work for it, you know. Um, just because you're the older guy, it, it, they make you work harder for it because they don't think you can hang. Right, you definitely have shown to those guys and to anyone else. I mean, 13 years later, you're still here, and you are currently uh, the Pacific Northwest Heavyweight Champion for the UIWA and BCW. Um, do you remember your first wrestling match? And if so, who was your opponent, and what company did you work for at the time? Well, yeah, actually, I do remember it. Um, <laughs> my first, uh, my very first pro wrestling match um, was against uh, another student at the time. We were in the company called OCW, which is Oregon Championship Wrestling. Um, was started by Billy Jack Haynes, and uh, the kid's name was Rodeo Cole. Um, he actually is is in, also involved in BCW at this time, but um, uh, he was my first match, and it was uh, I was scared to death, man. When I hit that ring. Uh, I, I was shaking so bad, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to wrestle. Leading up to that match, and I know, you know, wrestlers just like any other, you know, entertainers hitting, you know, the stage, performing with comedy, music, or wrestling, whatever the case may be, there could be the butterflies, there could be the jitters, but, you know, performing in front of people, whether it's 20, 20, 30,000 people in attendance and in the professional shows. And then on you know, the indie scene, you know, 100 to 200, 300 people in the crowd. Um, did you get any, did you feel that you was nervous leading up to that first match? Oh, yeah. Oh, I was terrified. <laughs> I've, I've never been one to, to, uh, to really enjoy being out in front of people. Um, I didn't care much for cameras and stuff. I was pretty camera shy. Uh, but being in professional wrestling, you get over that real fast. It's either, you know, you get over it or you get out. Mm. Well, 
w regardless, um, you know, at least you can look back and say, hey, that that was the starting point for me. You know, work hard, pay your dues. Uh, I guess the, those three words are very crucial to a lot of wrestlers. Pay your dues. Some people may get it. Some people don't. You being in the business for 13 years, how important is it to pay your dues, to, to, to learn from others, to dealing with the ups and downs in the wrestling business? How important it is for you to, or to anyone, any wrestler out there, young or old, to pay their dues? Well, you know, um, in order for others to do what we do, uh, in order for me to do what what I've done, I mean, I, I had to have guys pave the way for me, and, and so I had to pay my dues behind them. You know, guys like, uh, you know, God rest his soul, Matt Bourne, um, uh, Dutch Savage, who we just recently lost. Um, you know, these are these are the guys that paved the way for us, so it's very important for us to, to have the respect for these guys and for those others that are that are trying to work their way up in the system as well, you know, it's very important to pay your dues and, and pave that road for the next guys coming in. You know, uh, my own son um, is a trained professional wrestler as well. So, you know, I've got another generation coming behind me. I find that very interesting. Uh, you said that your son, you know, he's now a tra he's getting himself into the wrestling industry. Um, did, did you suggest that he should be a wrestler or did he reach out to you and say, pop, I want to be just like you. I want to be a wrestler. I want to, how, how was that conversation like between father and son? Um, my son, uh, came to a couple of shows and, uh, the, the guy who was in charge of, of us at the time, uh, was Mad Max, Scott, uh, Scott Ferris. And, uh, the night, that particular night we needed a ring boy. He let him be a ring boy and he, the kid loved it so much, you know, um, he just kind of stuck with us. And then, uh, when it came time, he just started getting in a ring and training with us and watching us and stuff. And then he says, Hey, he says, you know, I think I can do this stuff too, dad. And I said, well, if you think you're tough enough, buddy, let's go. And, uh, he did. And I'll tell you what, that kid can tear up a ring. And have have y'all two have had a match with each other or against each other yet? Oh yeah, um, his very first match, in fact, was against me. And when he went to the ring, the guys that were in there with him, uh, they told him, "Look, uh, everything that your dad has done to you, every time he spanked you or whatever, this is your chance to get even. So when you get in there, let him have it because it's kind of a like, kind of like open season, you know." This is where you can put your licks in, too. And, you know, that's interesting. And, you know, I sometimes I feel like when family members competing against each other, maybe it could be a, a odd type of thing or maybe awkward. Like, wait a minute, that's, that's my father. That's my son in the ring against me. I mean, how... Did it did did it feel odd to you to having to be in the wing with 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 your flesh and blood? I mean, and how how long did it took for y'all to just put the father and son element to the side and just be wrestlers? Um, yeah. Well, to answer your first question, yeah. Um, it was it was different being in there with him because you know I mean I protect myself and I and I want the the other guy I I try to protect him as well when we're when we're doing a wrestling thing. But um, having your son or, or daughter or whatever in there, in my case, my son, um, I, I, I had to really be careful. You know, I didn't want to hurt him, but I wanted to, him to understand that, you know, he, he has his friends that tell him all oh, that wrestling stuff's fake, it's fake, it's fake. And there ain't nothing about wrestling that's fake. You know, we get in there, we bust our butts, and, and we get hurt. But, man, I tell you, it's, it's, it's like a high. It's like, kind of like a drug. But um, it's one of those things that, that once you're in there, I, 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 you know, I, I kind of lose track of, of thinking sometimes because of, of how I feel about the business, you know, because of, the, of, of being in it so long.
Well, look at it this way. It's just another way of showing your, your son tough love. You know, usually it's in the house. Uh, now it's in the wrestling ring. And, and to do it in a character type, uh, kind of way. It's just, just look at it as another way of showing tough love. Because you know, kids sometimes, you know, they... You know they want to you know be hard headed and stuff, and you gotta you know straighten them out. So <laughs> I guess you can look at it that way. Oh, absolutely. And you know it's he was probably one of my one of my uh, most enjoyable opponents early on. But um, you know I mean I've had a lot since, but uh, he was probably one of my most enjoyable early on. Not only are you a wrestler for BCW, but you are the Booker for BCW and it's not often that I hear wrestlers and you know not only do they wrestle but they are bookers uh how do you manage to balance that out being a wrestler and a booker for the same company you know um out of respect to my boss um the owner of the company was also my uh, uh tag team partner off and on for the last 10 plus years uh Tex Thompson and um, when he came to me and offered me the job, um, I was real, um, I wasn't really sure I wanted to do that because I wanted to be the wrestler. I didn't want to be the guy booking all the matches. But I've learned that as long as you keep a level head and it's not all about you, it's got to be all about the show, you know, and making the storylines run and making things make sense, then, it, then it'll work. It's not easy, but... It's it's something that uh, that I'm really enjoying. Here's something I want to know, you know, from a Booker's perspective. Obviously, their job is to put the matches together, you know, have wrestlers scheduled and everything. Is the Booker's job also to um, come up with the storylines and ideas, or do or is your job specifically just to book? the wrestlers into shows oh no it's my job is to book the wrestlers yes but it's also to to put the right guys in the right storylines and and make that run um i spend i spend countless hours uh a night once i leave the show on a sunday um i'm already planning for the next week so it's, it's countless hours going into it thinking of you know how to run how to continue a storyline or how to end the storyline how to make the right guys fit together and how, how to, you know, make sure that runs correct. And I want to say congrats to you. Uh, you are, of course, the UIWA BCW Pacific Northwest Heavyweight Champion. I mean, how do you feel being the champ for the company, man? Well, um, I'm one of a few champs we have, but, um, I'm very proud to carry um, any belt that that is put around my waist. Um, you know, and the, the, the tough thing is when you're the booker, a lot of the guys, they, they see you as a champion, you know, they think, oh, he put that around his own waist. And I didn't. Um, this was something that was put around my waist. It wasn't me that did it. Um, to hold the championship, I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's something to be proud of, especially when it's, when it's recognized as, as well as it is being the, not only just the BCW, but the UIWA BCW Pacific Northwest heavyweight champion. You know, that's, that's, uh, it's a long moniker, but <laughs> it's one of those things that um, it's, it makes you proud, man. It makes you proud. Oh, so UIWA and BCW are more of a joint promotion. Yeah, um, BCW, we're a, we're a local promo, promotion here in, in the Portland area. And UIWA, they're a worldwide. It's kind of like joining up with the NWA, you know, type of thing, or joining in with the, the uh, a, AWA back in the day when they were running together. You know, you, you became a kind of like a, a, an offshoot of that company. So, you know, we, we put those together, and it, this gives, gives us worldwide uh, exposure as well. If you can have a dream match uh, against any wrestler, dead or alive, indie wrestler or pro wrestler, um, what who, what would your dream match be and who would your dream opponent be? My dream opponent would probably be uh, 
the guy that just retired not a couple of years ago, uh, Shawn Michaels. Um, we have a similar, similar bills. We both have the longer hair. Uh, we both have the super kick finish. Um, and I think that, uh, I just like the chance to prove that I'm, you know, my super kick is just as sweet as his. You know, Shawn Michaels is without a doubt one of the greatest in ring performers of all time. But that dude has looked a lot different lately. I mean, th if you see him on the SummerSlam pre show, it's looked like he's a whole different person with that beard. I mean, I guess beard has become a. You know, the cachet of facial hair. I mean, everybody feels the need to grow a beard. He, he just looked like a complete different person right now. And I'm like, I don't even recognize that dude anymore. I don't recognize him as a Shawn Michaels. I just recognize him as a dude that's deer hunting or something. I don't know. I, I like Shawn, but he doesn't change, man. He doesn't change. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, when he retired and they, they put him onto that nature show thing that he does with the hunting and stuff, um, he did change his look quite a bit when he grew the beard and stuff. It's, uh, it's definitely a different, different look for Sean. But, you know, he does have a huge, you know, support from fans, and he's obviously made new fans from his show. Uh, but, you know, more power to him. And, you know, Shawn Michaels, this is a guy – who has overcome adversity, you know, he had his issues outside the wing, and then he had the four-year lay uh, absence because of the back injuries and came back and got even better. I mean, that doesn't happen to a lot of athletes, but for that to happen to a wrestler, it just shows that wrestlers are just as tough as athletes than any other athletes in, in sports, you know, to come back, from a four-year absence and just to dominate your sport, I mean, I mean that's that just add the legend of that is Shawn Michaels. At least that's how I feel about it. Well, you, you're right on with that one, man, for sure. You know, like you said, to, to to leave for four years and then come back and and you know be just like you never left and just basically take it over and and run it like it's your game. You know, that's that's something that's you know kudos to Shawn for that one for sure. So, Lone Star, let me ask you, uh, do you have any upcoming shows, matches you would like to promote you have coming up? Well, you know, we have a show coming up on the 8th. Uh, we've got uh, UIWA uh, uh, North American champion, I think he is, uh, Chief Atakula Kula coming in. Uh, we're throwing him on a, in a three-way with uh, a couple of our guys, uh, Buddy Highway, former BCW champion. And also uh, Damon Scythe, another former BCW champion. And that's something that, uh, you know, that's something we definitely want to promote. Push push hard. And my last question, well, actually next to last question is, um, if you can give anyone advice to anyone to that wants to be wrestlers, an aspiring wrestler, what would your advice be? Uh Take it to heart. If it's something you really want, uh, don't give up. Just get in there and train, train, train. You know, we can't push enough that uh, the stuff that we do is very dangerous if it's not done correctly. So um, this is the stuff that, you know, if you're going to do it, then get properly trained. Don't just go and be, be in some backyard thing and, and, and just, you know, be Johnny Superstar right now because it's not going to happen and you're just going to get hurt or hurt somebody else. So get trained. That's right. Lay off the backyard wrestling. That's not the way to go. Go to a real school, do your research, and get properly trained. Backyard wrestling, no-no. That's a no-no. And um, my last question is, how can people get in touch with you social media-wise? Facebook, Twitter, or any other links people need to know? Um, well, I'm, I'm not too much on the, on that Facebook and, and that kind of stuff. Um, the best way to get, get a hold of me is if they can get a hold of, uh, uh, my buddy sign guy who hooked me up with you. Uh, if they can get a hold of him, then they can get a hold of me or go to BCW. They have a website as well. Um, I am not too sure of how to get on there. Again, I'm not, I'm not real hip on this stuff. I'm a, I'm an old school guy. So, uh, but to get a hold of, get a hold of BCW in Portland, Oregon and, 
And if you want to get booked, get a hold of me. We'll see what we can make happen. Excellent, man. And I want to thank you for being on the show. Shout out to Sign Guy, a uh, very helpful individual. Um, thank you, Lone Star, for being on the show. Best of success goes out to you, man. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Anytime I can get on and talk with guys like you, you know, this is this is something that we, we like to promote this and, and just keep pushing it. So much love to Sign Guy as well. Thanks, buddy.